Oh, let me get these cars going. Good morning, everybody. Today is September 12th, 2017. This is Daily Motivation. I am Jeffrey W. Jansen. Welcome to my Facebook page. Welcome to my friends and family, my teammates, my friends from all over the world. Got a lot of you. The reason why I do these is so that when you get over, I give you a little bit of a tip to basically go out there every day and push harder. Go for those raises. Go to lose that weight. Go out there to get more business. Go out there to figure out how to get a pay raise. Okay, maybe you're looking at getting a new job, getting on with a new trucking company, getting a new factory job. Maybe you're looking to open up a business. Maybe you're looking to find spirituality. Maybe you're trying to do something and you need somebody to let you know that you matter, that you're important, but you need somebody that tell, when they tell it to you, they mean it. Me, I mean it. Why do I mean it? The world's a lot better place when everybody is on the same sheet of music and we're a fine, well-oiled machine that come in different areas, different parts, and everything else. And I want each and every one of you to know that's how it goes. Now, how do we get motivated every day? First thing we gotta do is we gotta get up, thank God for everything we have in life, okay? Now, this morning I did a video because I went out to check on my watermelons and I knew I had a bunch of baby watermelons out there and I had, and it just popped in my head what a great analogy the watermelons would be since we have winter time coming up. And each one of you has to understand that motivation cannot just be for a day. John C. Maxwell said it the best, you know, you also don't want to go overboard with motivation. You don't want to burn yourself out with one day going out doing something and spending five days trying to recover. What you want to do is you want to spend enough time making sure you get your task at hand taken care of. John C. Maxwell gave the analogy, and there's two people I love their analogy. John Maxwell gave an analogy of cutting a tree down. Okay, the other analogy comes from Brian Carruthers, who basically talks about a uh, popping popcorn. Okay, sorry, I'm going by a school and there's a bunch of children outside, and I want to make sure that I'm paying attention <laughs> because I know my daughter's in fifth grade now. So give me a second while I go past this school. All right, here's the analogy every day you go out and you want to get a tree chopped down. So you get an ax, you have, the ax is the tool. You go out there, you swing the ax five times at the tree. One, two, three, four, five. You go back in, put the ax down in a knife safe area. The next day you go out, you swing the ax five more times at the same spot on that tree. One, two, three, four, five. Good, put the, you go back inside, put the ax down, go about the next day. Swing that X five times at that tree. One, two, three, four, five. You do that over and over and over again. You don't stop. It doesn't, you don't take the last day off. You still swing that X five times at that tree, even on Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Eventually that tree is going to fall down. So timber, tree falls down. Somebody asks you, oh man, that must have taken a lot of effort. Nope, didn't even break a sweat taking down the tree. It came down. Because you had a you had a mission you had but you stayed consistent and that tree fell down why did the tree fall down didn't matter about how the length of time it took you the fact is you went outside every day you swung the axe five times at the tree you hit the tree five times and you did it every single day and eventually you didn't break a sweat it took less than probably a minute every day you didn't even think about it and the tree still came down and it worked and the tree fell you were consistent with what you did, but you gave it and not right amount of time. You didn't give up and say, I'm done. You didn't just say, oh, I'm done with this. You stay consistent, the tree fell. The other analogy that Brian Carruthers gives, now remember, let me go back on this one real quick. The other thing about that tree is, and this is all coming from John C. Maxwell when he was on stage the other day, and I've read this stuff also, so it makes sense. If you go outside and you hit that tree every day with a baseball bat, it's never gonna fall down. You can't hit a tree with a baseball bat. And I love when John Maxwell said that because it was, I just started laughing because it makes sense. There are people out there, they use the wrong tools and they'll think that a tree's gonna come back down by using a baseball bat. No, it doesn't. And if you go outside and then you go and you start hitting every tree one time in your yard with the ax, you're not gonna chop anything down. You're just gonna have a bunch of scarred up trees. And if you go outside and you decide I'm gonna take it all down in one day, well now you're using all your energy and you can't, there's no time to do anything else because you spent all your time, effort, and energy into taking that one tree down and you burnt yourself out by doing it. 
So the fact is you have to be consistent with what you're doing. You have to know what your levels are. You have to know what your boundaries are. You have to be able to go. Now, the other analogy goes by Brian Carruthers, all right? And this one, I love this one because I actually like to do it. And I may even actually do a, a video on it one of these days. But the whole other thing is the bag of popcorn. We all eat popcorn. It smells good. We're in the microwave. Now, Brian gave this analogy. I'm probably sure he got it from somebody else. But the, um, like I said, Brian Carruthers gave this analogy. You put the bag of popcorn in there. And on the bag, it says three minutes. You have to give it a full three minutes. Well, here's how people are with life. Look at life like something you're doing. Drawing for the race, trying to lose weight, trying to... Okay. Look at it like this. You put the bag of popcorn in the microwave. You set it for three minutes. It's going for 30 seconds. Oh, phone rings, gotta stop it. You stop it. Okay, you answer on hello. Okay, you go back. Oh, guys, get started again. You put it in for a minute. Oh, somebody's at the door. You stop it. Okay, okay, I'll get it, you know. You put it back in, somebody left the door. All of a sudden, you've gotta go into work real quick. So you stop it again at a minute and a half. So then you take it out of the microwave, or you keep it in the microwave, but then you go do it at your thing, and you come back, and the popcorn's still not pop. Why? Because you had to turn it off. You kept shutting it off before the three minutes. Over and over and over again. You wanted to lose the weight. You wanted to get off drugs. You wanted to quit smoking. You wanted to get bigger business. You wanted to help somebody, but nothing was coming true because you kept shutting the bag of popcorn down. Because you didn't give it the full three minutes. You can't give it 50 seconds and then come back and expect another 50. You got to keep going with it. So when you're popping the dang popcorn, every time you shut it down, guess what? It cools down and you're not smelling the buttery freshness of that bag of popcorn. So you go back in again, start it up again, and life gets in the way. So it stop again. And then you wonder why each time you quit a business, each time you quit a thing, you can't figure out what happened. You didn't give it the proper amount of time. You did not stay consistent with what you were trying to do. Then you got the person over there that's trying to guide you, trying to show you how to do it. And they basically put the bag of popcorn in and say, now sit down, clear your mind, and watch. And they put the popcorn in the microwave. They shut the door. They push the three-minute time. And then they go and they sit on top of you and just say, quit stopping it. Now all of a sudden, three minutes hits. Now all of a sudden, you got buttery popcorn. You take it out of the microwave, you open it up, put it in a bowl, and like, wow, I spent six years trying to pop a three-minute bag of popcorn. If you treat your life like that bag of popcorn, if you treat your life like that tree, and you're not consistent, whatever your goals are, whatever you're trying to set out to do for yourself, whatever you're trying to accomplish, it's not going to happen because you're not giving it the right amount of time. You're not giving it right. You're going to have naysayers, family and friends say, oh, you can't do that. Oh, don't do that. Oh, don't do this. Oh, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't don't join the Marine Corps. Red, here's a good example. I'm going to use my buddy Red. He's one of my best friends. Um, he's a great guy. When you join the Marine Corps, how many people told you when you join the Marine Corps, oh, oh you're never going to make it. You're a bullet sponge. Oh, don't go into there. You know, blah, blah. They gave you every reason in the world not to join the Marine Corps. How many people have went in business for yourself and say, oh, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. You know, there's an 80% failure rate of business. Okay. Or, oh, why should you go for the raise? Your boss is this and that. And, oh, they'll never give you a raise. You should not even try because you're never going to get it. Oh, you can't get promoted in our company because, because the person you're talking to never did it. And you listen to them. Every time you try to do something in life, you're going to get the naysayers. I was at a convention this weekend. Now, I'm not going into the business what I do. I just need to give a good example, okay? At the convention, some, I call them idiots, okay? That does not mean they're bad people. Idiotic, you know, is idiot, you know? Stupid is stupid, you know? And they came in there, and they've never sold, and they never done anything with their business, yet they try to give out business cards to a whole other business that they're in because they never, and, they, and that business never took off for them either. It's like, if you haven't even tried it, one, why are you trying to take on people for something you never succeeded at? Uh, Brian gave a good, there was a, a gentleman I was reading on Facebook, and I can give you my own stories, it's just these are so much better. Um, 
the guy said, you know, Brian talked to him. Now, Brian makes good money in this business, but it's not about the money. He helps a lot of people, and he's willing to help them day after day after day after day. The reason why you never know how much Brian makes because he's still out there helping, just like Rich Elman's out there helping, just like I'm out there helping. We start at the bottom. Guess what? We still do the same thing over and over and over again because it is successful. It works. We're consistent. We keep going. But anyway, a guy comes in, has no money, has no job, and the guy comes in the business all motivated. Two weeks later, he calls up Brian. He's like, hey, I, I want to sit down. And Brian's like, okay, the guy's ready to go. He goes, hey, I got this job opportunity for you, and you'd do great at it, and, and I'd like to bring you to my business. Brian's looking, what are you talking about? This guy has never made a dime in any business, but then he's trying to take on a person that is so successful, and then he's sitting there trying to explain to him, oh, yeah, well, this over here is so much better because he just got into it, so he's... And Brian's looking at him like, dude, you're an idiot. You, you're you never going to make a dime because you're all over the place with everything you're doing. You're all over the place with your stuff. So you're not a good fit for our company. What I'm trying to say is if you don't stay consistent, then that's, how, that's why your friends and family look at you like, well, you know, he's going to be on one thing, he's going to be on another. You know, they want you, they're, they're in a land of comfort, man. And they're watching from the outside in, looking at what you're doing. Your bosses, your jobs, they're all watching what you're doing. And if you're all over the place, it doesn't matter if you're trying to lose weight. I can go do cardio one day, weightlifting the next, stop for a week, go back, and there will never be a result. Because I didn't give it the right amount of time it needed to grow it. I always use my garden as an example. I plant the seeds. Every one of you that's been watching my garden will tell you this. I go out there every day. I water, I fertilize, I feed, I get ladybugs to go kill the nematodes, I get uh, walking sticks to go kill, you know, I do different things to have an organic garden. Am I a veggie, vegetarian? No. Am I an organic person? No. But I know that it takes time to nourish and grow my vegetables, my fruits. I know it takes time to grow trees. But if I went out there, put the seed in the ground, went out there the next day and said, oh, didn't grow, and then I throw away or I kill it. Or I go outside and two months later, I was like, well, my water, my tomatoes didn't grow. They got a little green, but they didn't. I killed a tree. I'm never going to have tomatoes. If that's what you're doing with your business, there are a lot of great business owners out there. And you wonder why, you know why they are the way they are? Because every day they have the same people coming into them, I want to raise, and then do nothing for them. And that person then has more responsibility. Then you get the few people that go in there and they're consistent. And those bosses and managers, they look at them like, wow, you know what? This person's doing a great job because they're consistent. You know what? If you're going to do something wrong, be consistent with it. Eventually, you're going to figure out you're doing something wrong. But the fact is, if you don't give it enough time, you don't nourish it, you don't take care of it. I, do, I see so many beautiful parents out there. So many great parents. They take care of their kids every day. They do what it takes. And they are awesome. But then I see that 1%. Oh, I'll see my kid every once in a while. Oh, I just gave up on him. And then they go around and they wonder why the other parent is getting upset with them. Because it's not about them. It's about the kids. If you give up on your kids, your kids are going to give up on you. If you do drugs around your kids, your kids are probably going to do drugs. If you smoke around your kids, your kids are probably going to have smoking. If you're around your kids and you're drinking, they're probably going to have drinking. Because you're doing something consistent on them. If you're not spending time with them and you're consistent at not spending time with them, they will look at somebody else as a mentor, not you. If you go out there every day and want to lose weight. Now, I'm going to go back to one of my stories to give you an example because I miss him. But he motivated me. Not because of his politics, I'll tell you that right now. But he motivated me. And Dr. Patrick McGinley from Quincy, Illinois, he died from muscular dystrophy. Every day, he did not have a choice. He went out there every day with his muscular dystrophy, and he did his thing. He had a following of students because he was a teacher. He was a history teacher. He loved politics. He loved history. He loved the people around him, even if they didn't agree with him. Him and I did not agree, but he was family to me. Not blood family, not adoptive family, just from the time I was in fifth grade on up, the guy just always motivated me, mentored me, not as much as my dad, but he was always there. And I used to go swimming with him in the pool and I watched how hard he'd work. And he wasn't working for money. He was working so that he never had to use a wheelchair. He was working so he never had, he was showing the world 
that his debilitating disease, muscular dystrophy, was not holding him back for who he was or what he could do, and he got up every day, same time, did the same thing every day, wrote books, talked and interviewed people, was around people that, but he always treated them like their situation was more important than his. And every day, the doctor told him 20, 30 years ago he'd be in a wheelchair on his deathbed, which was, I, I don't know, on his deathbed, he never was in a wheelchair. He walked every day. Finally, some medications, I don't know the story, got a little backwards, a little turned around, but he did what he had to do. He did what was necessary to keep walking. He did the unthinkable because everybody told me he couldn't. The doctor said he'd be in a wheelchair. Some people said he'd be dead. Some people say, oh, you know, they're the naysayers of the world. He was my friend. And every day he went out there. That's why I don't always use my stories because my stories are heartfelt. And I do get choked up about him. But I watched this guy. I helped him in the swimming pool to beat his muscular dystrophy. Not, you can overcome anything if you want to but if you give up on yourself and if you give up and you don't guess what I'm not praying for God to make you go around your struggles and not give it to you I'm praying he gives it to you worse why because you need to get through it to get to it and the harder you are pushed the more problems you have the more problem solving you can do to where when you're finally out of it you'll never go through it again I had to go through boot camp or the Marine Corps well, you know what a lot of people don't know? The summer, that summer before I joined the Marine Corps, I was in the Army boot camp. So I went to the Army boot camp, passed with Flying Cuz, got a presidential uh, physical fitness award, got out, joined the Marine Corps, had to go right back to boot camp, a whole nother boot camp, and I put myself through the stress and the rigors, got through the schooling, went all the way to the Marine Corps. Now, what I did in there, was I the best? No, I sucked. But you want to know something? Ask yourself this. If, you, if I went and got my doctor's degree and I became your doctor, okay? I could become dead last in the class and I'd still be called doctor. If I become dead last as a lawyer but I still pass, doesn't matter how bad I am, I'm still a lawyer. Do you know what position I came in at? No, but the fact is I finished. I could be number one or I could be dead last. As long as I finished, I'm still got the talk, doctor title and that's all anybody sees. All anybody's going to see from you is what you want them to see. If you want them to see your struggle and your pain and everything else, go ahead and show it to them. They're probably gonna go somewhere else. But if you show them that through your pain and struggle, this is what you, they're like, wow, man, you must be rich. Oh, wow, you could do, I could never do. What are you talking about? I was in your shoes. I'm in your shoes right now, but I'm still going and I'm happy and I'm glad I did it. Could I have taken an easy road several times in my life? Could I have the other day t broken down and taken a job doing something else where they're going to pay me right away all kinds of money that I'm going to make right? Yes. But is that going to make me a better person? Is that going to make me be able to go out and influence somebody? I have one goal in life. I have one mission in life. And it's not about what I do. My one mission is to make a difference in one person's life. Make a difference so big that my life was worthwhile. That's my goal and mission, to show my daughter. It is not about the money, about the prestige, about the privilege, about the awards. It's not about that. It's about making a difference. It's about telling that Vietnam vet, welcome home, when no one's ever welcomed him home. It's about telling that World War II vet, hey, I know everything you did. We got your back now. Don't worry about what's going on. We understand they're trying to go back to... There's a reason why you fought. We're going to sit there and take on the battle for you. It's okay. We've got it from here on out. It's about those that have accomplished stuff that are like, look, I did it for the right reasons. They just need to know that what they did it for, others will do it also. Not in their way. They don't even want their name recognized. They just want you to know that it's, there's more to life than that. Look at the Rockefellers of the world. Look at the Dale Carnegies of the world. A lot of people are like, oh, they're rich. They had all the money in the world. Right? Every single library in America is 
because of Dale Carnegie because he wanted to leave a legacy. All of them, they gave more money away than they ever took in because they figured out that life, you can't die with your money. You can't die and take it with you and spend it, you know. We don't know what the afterlife is. Not a single person. I don't care what religion tells you. I don't care what the Bibles tell you. I don't care what the Quran tells you. I don't care what the Buddhists tell you. We don't know what's next. But we do know this. Everything you have now, you cannot take with you. But you know what you can do when you're on your deathbed? If you made a difference in one person's life, that's how I feel. So if you guys want to make a better life for your families, make a better life for your kids, make a better life for your friends and those people around you, if you want to set out and accomplish your goals, that's why goals and accomplishments are more important than money. If you win that race, not win it, just accomplish it. Just, you know, if you go after the marathon, do the swimming, and you're able to do it, then you accomplished it. You have a feeling of worth. If you go out there and do nothing but create your life like drama and ter talk bad. Last thing, then I'll get going. I had a buddy of mine, one of my best friends. Gets in relationships with women all the time. Uh, good man. He's faithful. But they treat him like crap. They take advantage of him, take his money. He's had to sell things of his. He called me the other day and said, okay, I'm done with the next one. Blah, blah, blah. I told her off and everything else. I'm like, great, but you're not done with her. No, man, I told her and you... I'm like, that's right. You told her and you called her every name in the book and you let her know how... I was like, but the only thing you showed her was that you still care. No, man, I called... Like, yeah, that's right. That's why she's able to take advantage of you. Because you didn't forgive her. Well, no, I'd never forgive her. She cheated on me and she took all my money. I'm like, yeah, and so did the last couple. And you never forgave them either. And you're still dwelling on them. What do you mean? You have to ask their forgiveness. You're not asking, when they're looking at forgiveness, like, ah, I beat him, he's that. No, actually, you know why you're asking for forgiveness? Because when you ask them for forgiveness, whether they give it to you or not, you're letting them go in your mind. When you say, please forgive me, you're not asking them, please forgive me for what they did to you. You're asking forgiveness for letting them stay in their here for so long. Let me apologize for keeping you on my brain for this long for you causing an effect on my life. Let me apologize to you for that because I should not have had you in my mind. I should have let you go. And then forgive them. I am sorry that it didn't work out. I'm sorry that something went wrong. I forgive you for what you did. Please forgive me for carrying it on. You must learn to forgive, forget, and move on. There's so many people out there, their stories have changed time after time. They still live off what goes on in high school and junior high. But it's funny how their stories got worse and worse and more exaggerated and changed. And they don't even remember what happened anymore. All they know is they left it in their mind for so long, they let it affect their life. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, you got people out there that have... It doesn't matter. They never let it go to where it, 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 this is a cesspool in their head. And they didn't forgive themselves. They didn't ask forgiveness from those that hurt them. And when people start understanding what that means to, to ask forgiveness, even from your ruthless enemies, it means you're, you're, you're letting them go. You're, you're cleaning up the cesspool in your mind and in your heart. And now you're open to what's new out there. So forgive, forget, move on. Shake people's hands. Tell them you love them. Tell them you care. And let people know they matter. My name is Jeffrey Jansen. Today is September 12, 2017. I have a beautiful daughter by the name of Gracie Ann, who I, I love bragging about. Okay, she, and, and I love bragging about all my friends and family. I love bragging about my Marine Corps brothers. I love bragging about people I don't even know. Why? Because people are beautiful. And everybody's like, oh, that, that's a stupid... No. It's true. Because every day that you're on this earth is another day you have a difference to change the life, to make a difference. Or to just be great. Remember, read 11 pages of a good book every day. We'll be reading today again. And just know that sometimes you need to stop, refocus your efforts, but learn from your mistakes, get back up, go again. Consistency. Consistency is everything. To all my friends out there that are going through some stuff, you're always in my heart and prayers. To all those single moms and dads out there, Keep going. Your kid, you are a mentor and a motivator and a role model for your kids. To all those married couples out there, you guys are doing a great job.
to all those people out there that are going after business, going after building teams, going after helping and making a difference in people's lives. You, each and every one of you matter. Each and every one of you is making a difference. To those that are still sitting on the couch trying to figure out, get off the dang couch! Get off the couch! Get out of the house! Move, 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 move! I'm sorry, I cannot stand it anymore. I know I'm, I'm, I'm quiet and all, but, but get off your lazy butts and get out there and be great. Something's better than nothing. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. God bless. Talk to everybody soon. Hey, Reddington! We need to go up and... Bruce needs a little bit of help. We gotta go to a national park. A couple Marine Corps buddies will understand that. Love you guys.